studio production begins in 5, 4, 3, 2, Welcome to Community Foundation Spotlight. I'm Erica Joseph, President with the Community Foundation, and we appreciate you joining us to learn a little more about some of the wonderful things happening right here in our community. Our guest is Kevin Justice. He's the Executive Director of the M4 Reactor here in Salisbury. Thank you for your time. Oh, thanks for inviting me. So um, I have the benefit of knowing a little bit about what you're doing and all the amazing things happening, but in case people have not heard about M4 Reactor yet, um, introduce us. Uh, what, so, are, what are you doing? Well, M4 Reactor is the only community makerspace on the entire eastern shore. And basically, a makerspace, the idea behind that is it's a place where people of common interest can come together uh, to work on projects where they share ideas and equipment and other, um, you know, any sort of collaborative efforts to make those things. Um, most maker spaces are specific to an age group. For example, we have small maker spaces in this, most of the local schools, and they typically had things like Lego robotics or maybe a 3D printer. Um, we like to think we have a fairly comprehensive space uh, with a lot of different things for everyone and we really serve the entire community from youth to seniors. And when you say you're a maker space, you're actually a physical space yes. <laughs> that people can come to and where is that space? So we're currently located at the Tri-County Council Multipurpose Facility, which is a mouthful, across from Warwick. Um, so right on Route 50. Right on Route 50, yep. Um, we've got about 1,600 square feet of space that has um, three primary areas in it, what we call our desktop fabrication area. Um, we have a, a classroom, and then we have a workshop in the back. And so people can come and visit. I know we'll talk a little bit about some of the specific programs you have, but do you have regular hours so that if someone hears about this and says, I want to go check out the maker space, when can I visit them? Sure. So we have regular hours that change, unfortunately. Well. <laughs> because we're all volunteers at this point. So um, normally we're open business days between like nine and five. We also work most weeknights, um, especially Tuesdays and Wednesdays, we're always open. And the rest just depends on when our volunteers can man the space. Um, so our hours are always posted on our website and anyone can always check that out. And we love to have people come by and ask questions and want a tour and that sort of thing. Um, also, every fourth Saturday from 10 to noon, we do an open house. So it's kind of like a, a, you know, a monthly open house to draw people in that just want to know more about the space. And you mentioned your website. What is that? Yeah, m4reactor.org. So hopefully fairly simple to get to. And you talked a little bit about people coming in and sharing ideas and being able to, you know, um, put your equipment to use to sort of have... What kind of equipment is that? Let's help people visualize sure. what is in the makerspace. Yeah, space. definitely. So we've got a, um, a variety of things. I mean, first, you could kind of envision it like your dad's garage that had all the woodworking tools and that sort of thing. But we've got way newer and cooler stuff. Um, so in our workshop area, we do have a full complement of, of wood tools. Some of those double as metalworking tools. Things like table saw, band saw, um, circular saw. Um, sanding equipment, dr uh, drill press, um, router table, those sorts of things, and more. Um, in that back area, we also have a CNC machine, which is basically a computer-controlled router. So you, although we have a manual router that you can do things like um, any craftsman would, you can actually, with the computer-controlled router, just create a design and load it into the system and it'll do all the work for you, which is really neat. And it's the same type of thing that would be used in a commercial application. So um, we've actually done training for people on that their next step would be to go to work in a commercial CNC environment. In the front of our shop, we've got what we call our desktop fabrication. So we do, we have a whole bank of 3D printers. We've got eight different 3D printers. Um, different capabilities so we can print with different plastics from PLA, which is, we like that most because it's um, it's biodegradable, it doesn't smell when you print it, um, it's fairly easy to work with. Um, but we can print with what are called exotic plastics, so things that are flexible or ABS, which can handle high temperatures, things like that. Um, we have an electronics area, so a full soldering station. Um, we work with Arduino and Raspberry Pis, which are different types of controllers that you can program. And we have two laser cutters, so a 40 watt and a 100 watt. And both of those, you can cut all sorts of materials from 
um, anything from like cloth, leather, uh, foam, wood, ceramic, or, I'm sorry, acrylic. Um, you can etch into things like ceramic and stone and metal, but you can't cut on those. We, they're not that high power. So just a wonderful array of <laughs> gadgets and tools yes. and things that people can come in and be inspired to create. And you mentioned the 3D printer, and I know here we have a variety of things that have all been made in your yes, makerspace. All made at our makerspace. And so you talked about the 3D printer. What would yeah. produce? What would what would that help you produce? Sure. So our our logo here was something that we produced on the 3D printer, and this print took about four hours. So 3D printing is a fairly slow process. Um, and and granted, that's that's more of something whimsical or fun, but we can actually print things that are useful. So if you've ever had one of these buckles that you had like on a backpack or something break, this is actually a 3D printed buckle that you could easily download the design and print. So you're taking something that is extremely useful and in everyday life sure. and you know it breaks and yeah. you've got a need for that and you could come to the makerspace and, and recreate, and recreate that. And recreate it, definitely. Of any size you need and, and, and also colors because we have all sorts of colors and materials. Now this particular piece I find fascinating because it's wood. Yes. What piece of equipment did you use to yeah. create this beauty? So this is made on our laser cutter and it's made, the material is Baltic birch. It's one eighth inch thick, so it's pretty thin. Um, and basically we, we create a pattern. There's actually a website you can go to to create this box pattern. Um, and then we, you know, we added the logo and that sort of thing. Um, laser cutting is very fast. Unlike 3D printing where you're waiting quite some time, um, it maybe took about two minutes to cut this entire box out and then you assemble it. And the really neat thing about, that I love about um, this aspect of laser cutting is this is a flat piece of wood where the types of cuts we put in here allow us to bend the wood without breaking it. And there's other patterns we can use for that. So that's really cool. I, I really, we've gotten into this a lot lately to try and see what we can do with it. So we're creating all sorts of different boxes and so forth. But that's not all. I mean, you can, as you can see, you can engrave with it. Um, this is done on the same laser cutter. And it basically, instead of really cutting into the wood, it just engraves it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot you could do with that. Um, if you did this, for example, on a harder material, you could rub paint in there um, and to have a different color and that sort of thing. So, and so I'll just highlight in case folks so that they can see the <laughs> up close. Yes. Now, if you want to come in and ex you know have this experience or produce these, how does that work? I mean, sure. you have materials and supplies, I'm sure, but you need right. support we have some. to help make that yes. available. Yes. So, for example, if you wanted to learn how to use the laser cutter, um, you would sign up as a member or sign up for one of our classes. Um, but as a member, you have the right to use the equipment. And then our first introductory course is taking a piece of wood and making basically a name tag out of it, something you might put on a, next to a door of your office or something. So fairly simple, but it gets you accustomed to using the software for the laser cutter, which is very straightforward. And then the whole procedure of setup on the laser cutter and actually cutting the piece. Um, and there's a lot of safety that goes along with that because with a 100 watt laser cutter, you could imagine you could create fires and there's smoke and, and that sort of thing. So um, we have all of the equipment that you have to turn on to protect it um, from, from an exhaust system to a cooling system and all of that. So we take you through that whole process and by the time you're done, we hope that you're comfortable enough to at least go the next step. And then we also will have other classes to do more advanced things like the box making and other, other items like that. So it's really empowering people with the safety information and yes. the knowledge of how it works. Yes. We're with uh, Kevin Justice with M4 Reactor on Community Foundation Spotlight. And we first connected because you were looking to make some of these programs and services available to the community, specifically targeting young people. Yes. Before we talk about that in detail, um, how did this idea for this program and this organization uh, come to be? What was your sure. inspiration? Sure. Well, um, actually about two and a half years ago, um, we had friends who had um, high school boys that were home for the summer, wanted something to do, and I had the idea of, well, let's do a little robotics camp type thing. Um, and uh, so once or twice a week during the summer, we got together at night and built these little robotic arms and programmed them and that sort of thing. And my background is in electrical engineering and I always wanted to do more in robotics. So it was helping my own passion as well. 
And when we got done doing that, I was really trying to think, how could I get more people involved in this? Um, and then starting to talk to others and, and look at what other communities had done, the, it really, the whole idea snowballed into, hey, let's create a maker space where we can do way more than just robotics. Um, so about now, I guess about two years ago, we started M4 Reactor up doing youth programs specifically. Um, we had our Summer of STEAM in 2016, where those were five weeks of youth camps where we did model rocketry, um, circuitry, robotics, all sorts of different projects. And that went really well. We've got our next Summer of STEAM coming up just in a couple of weeks. And STEAM for those, I mean, oh, I know folks in education yes. <laughs> and in science and you know, technology no. know that, but what, is the, what does Summer of STEAM stand for? Sure, STEAM is an acronym that stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. And so you incorporate all of that in the makerspace. Exactly. And um, the foundation, because we're able to work with so many different nonprofits on new ideas and things that are, you know, starting for the first time. It was a perfect sort of synergy. And um, I know there'll be more great things to come, but talk a little bit about the youth program and, and what people can experience, what kids experience sure. when they come into your summer sure. of STEAM. Sure. So last year, um, specifically, like I said, they we did the projects, for example, the rocket uh, building class was our most popular class last year and we did they actually went through and built three or four rockets a couple of the first kits that we did were exactly that they were kits they were very simple that you could put together in an hour or so so um, like the very first day we put them together they had to dry and we actually launched them on the second day and these were very small rockets about eight to ten inches tall um, and they didn't go very high, but the point was to get them accustomed to building these and working with the, the rocket engines and so forth. By the end, though, we had them designing their own rockets. So we went through all of the theory behind how the weight distribution should be on a rocket. Um, we also learned how to calculate the height of a rocket by looking at it through using um, a compass and protractor and that sort of thing. Um, so there was a lot of science that went with it. And then on the last day, we had another big launch with all of our rockets um, and the larger rockets, because most of the ones they designed themselves were much larger. Um, of course they were. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was the end of the class. Whereas um, our robotic arm camp, that was where they actually had a kit that they went and physically constructed a robot. Um, the components of it basically were uh, thin um, plywood and utilizing that with things like motors and servos and, and our Arduino that we programmed. Um, so the first probably three days was physically building it and getting it together and then a good day and a half of programming it to get it to do what you wanted to do. And then finally on the last day it was a challenge basically where they had, we set up some little small items and they had to do basically like a robot would do in a manufacturing facility of repeatedly be able to pick something up in a certain spot and drop it in a bucket, you know, and program it to do it over and over. Mm -hmm. So really sort of taking, and I can imagine that this is a great sort of um, segue from one grade to another. It keeps them engaged and, you know, thinking critically and working on science and math activities. Um, you know, in a season where sometimes those things aren't necessarily a priority um, in the summer. Yeah. And a lot of it, too, it's they're doing it in a very fun environment. You know, they, they don't necessarily think, they're not thinking about the fact that they're learning science and using math and, and all of these skills. And even, uh, for example, with the, the rockets, there we had a whole thing where we were looking for them to design it artistically and, and paint it and so forth. So there were all sorts of aspects that we incorporate in our lessons. Right. Now, um, we talked about your physical location. Mm -hmm. For anybody who hadn't heard that, you are sort of directly across Route 50 from Warwick Community yep. College. Um, what's the address there? 31901 Tri-County Way. We're in Suite 135. There is a sign outside to get to us, so hopefully people will be able to find us. And they can find you online. Online at m4reactor.org. And I have visited one of your open houses in the mm -hmm. past and was struck by the range of people who were there. Yes. There were families with very, very small kids. There were um, adults and sort of craftsmen, like, you know, guys that you yep. would imagine working in their own workshop. Sure. Um, teenagers, 
college kids. I mean, it was just this very interesting mixture of people <laughs> from all the community yep. checking out all the equipment that you have. And yeah. you had great demonstrations of how those things work. Um, what's coming up next um, as far as maybe a program that someone could get their child involved in mm -hmm. or your next um, open house opportunity? Sure. So from a programming standpoint, we're always looking at expanding our educational opportunities. So um, I actually met with an educator yesterday who's going to start to incorporate some of our machinery like our laser cutter and CNC machine into artwork. So then she'll be doing courses, art baked based courses, but using the machinery to create that. So that I'm really looking forward to that. Um, we're going to continue to um, add a lot to our course offerings from, uh, we call it from crafts to craftsmanship. So some of it might be very simple um, or, you know, things that you would be doing and some of it might be more intense like on the robotics end or the fine woodworking and so forth. Um, so definitely look forward to that but then one of our big things we're working on is trying to expand our after school program this past year we did a pilot program at the salisbury school that went very well and we're trying to expand that to all the schools in the county and beyond um, we're looking to um, have meetings with all the different schools to see how we can implement it there um, we also have a couple of competitions coming up. We have a 3D print competition for schools to, to enter, and that'll be in the fall of the school year. Um, and they can have individuals or teams compete, and there will be prizes for the best designs and best prints. Um, wow, there's so much going on. This summer at the Wicomico County Fair, we're actually doing a siege competition as well. So anyone can enter this. Um, it's kind of a mini pumpkin chunkin type oh, event, okay. but it has to be historically representative. So nothing like air cannons or things like that. It has to look and work like a traditional trebuchet or ballista or something like that. Um, the size is only three feet by three feet, so it's fairly manageable. Um, so we look for everyone to, to join in on that. And there's more information on our website on that. Uh, very low $10 entry fee. Um, we just want a lot of people to come out and have fun with that. And um, we're looking actually to do some other programs as well um, and other competitions. One of the things we're looking into how to incorporate is a robot sumo league. And basically this would be a competition where you build small 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter robots. And the way you compete is it's on a round platform and um, you have to program your robot so it's autonomous to push the other robot out of the ring. So it sounds simple, but it's not. Um, and it gets- Robotic sumo wrestling. Yes, robotic sumo <laughs> wrestling. So we're gonna be uh, creating a local league for that and have everyone of all ages working on robots to compete. Well, that is, I mean, just so many different ways to get connected to the work that you're doing with M4 Reactor and to sort of build on people's creative ideas and questions and, you know, ways to do things. So what a wonderful overview. Thank you for that. No, thank you for having me. Now, before we wrap, is there anything that we've not touched on that you want to make <laughs> sure that somebody hearing about M4 Reactor for the very first time um, makes sure to, you know, keep in mind? Right. I think the biggest thing is that don't be intimidated by even what we talked about today. Um, we will teach anyone who has no experience with this equipment how to, how to use it and how to, to create things for their everyday life or things that may be more whimsical. Um, that's the whole purpose is to teach people how to make things. So don't feel you have to be a craftsman to come in and use the space and use the equipment and sign up for classes. Excellent. Well, thank you for sharing and thank you for all that you're doing through M4 Reactor uh, here on, uh, in Wicomico County and across the shore. Great. Thanks for having me. You've been watching Community Foundation Spotlight. I know that there are many passionate and engaged and creative people out in the community that are hearing about M4 Reactor. Please take the time to learn more about them and see how you can get involved. I'm Erica Joseph with the Community Foundation and we'll see you next time.